Hey there, I'm DJ Shurs. So a lot of my videos are usually of just me with my hands building something and you don't really get to see me uh, interact with people or at least talk. So as of uh, the conference at Maker Faire, I've gotten some emails saying, hey, you're actually pretty personal, so maybe you can chat a little bit on your videos so we can get an idea of what it is you're doing and, and get to know me better. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about this guy here. You know, some of you might remember him, and what I've done with him is I've put the EZB version 3 into him, and I've taken out his old board. His old board, actually, believe it or not, was the predecessor to this um, by about four years, though. He's been around for quite a while. The original version that I've created wasn't as nice and refined as this. Um, I have one actually around here. Ah, okay, so I do have them. So this here is the first version that K9 ran on. He ran on a uh, 16F877A, if that's right. Uh, I haven't used one of those in quite a while. Microchip pick. The board I put together myself, seal the wires. It was not a, uh, it was a prototype board that I just designed myself. The code on it uh, allowed it to do some, it took a long time doing the code, it allowed it to do some three-dimensional tra data transformation so it can understand objects and where objects are based upon how much it's moved how it's turned, so it would rotate the, and transform the, uh, the data grid. I eventually got this guy, and I went, you know what, I'm fed up with it, so it's time to move on. So I got this guy printed up, and this was the first version of the EZB that actually was something that people could, I wanted people to be able to, to buy it so they can start doing what I was doing. But the problem was the code that set on the chip was so specific to what I was doing, and people plugged things in because it just wasn't going to work. I finally got to the point where I was receiving so many email messages and people were saying, hey, I really want to be able to make what you've done help me out. Helping people with the hardware isn't the problem. It's hard to helping people with the software. So I created the EZB. And the EZB stemmed from building a bunch of code for my robotics, but trying to make it universal that people could install onto their robot without actually having to configure and spend all the time sitting in front of the code and scratching their head and say, what does this do? How do I change this? How do I make this? With robotics, you're focusing on the hardware. You're focusing on how you make this thing interact with people by making it move in different ways and making it light up and making it uh, look like something that people want to be able to interact with. So that's the creative aspect. The software isn't a creative side. It's a very logical math, very long and drawn out sitting there writing code. So what I've done is I've taken all of the programming I've ever done with robotics and I put it into a single package called the EZB. So this board contains a whole bunch of code on a chip and the code is triggered and controlled by your computer over a Bluetooth connection. This is the EZB version 3. And what it is is a microcontroller that's laid out like the Arduino. So it's an Arduino format and it's got a Bluetooth module on it a 40 megahertz PIC. It has 20 serial ports, 20 servo ports. Um, the voltage regulator is 7 amps, so you can operate all of your peripherals off of the uh, voltage regulator without having to worry about um, you know, current draw and it overheating and such. It has 8 ADC ports. There's one I2C header, so you can chain I2C devices to it. It also has a 3.3 voltage regulator on there too, so you can plug in Arduino shields and you can power Arduino shields and control them from it also. All you have to do is plug stuff into it, and then it connects to your computer, and your computer does all the work. So your computer is the brain for this. This is like a, a controller is really all it is. So the computer tells this what to do. Now the benefit to this is your computer runs at a very high speed and has a bunch of peripherals and an interactive display and a keyboard, joystick support, all these different things you can plug into it. So by allowing the computer to be the brain of this, you can now add things like cameras and voice recognition and voice synthesis and um, joysticks and Wii controllers. I mean, the list goes on. As much Whatever you can add to the computer, you can add to this. As you can see here, all of his sensors and everything are plugged into the EZV. And I'll show you how I'm going to connect to him from the computer, and we're going to control him and make them come alive. And now we're connected. And I'm going to open up the program that I've already created for K9. 
And as you see all these different controls are loading, each control mimics a different piece or peripheral or something that I want to control on the robot. This control here is called a servo movement panel and you can only have one movement panel per project. A movement panel mimics or controls a movement method, whether it's modified servos, or it's an H-bridge, or it's a Roomba vacuum. You have a list of all these different mechanisms to move your robot. This particular case we're using two modified servos. This here is his joystick. It moves the servos that I have assigned to his head. This joystick will be set up to move him. So this distance sensor here is a sharp analog distance sensor. It uses infrared to determine how far away an object is. The amount of voltage returned back to the board determines that. Normally with Arduino you would have to write your own code to be able to determine how far away something is and what to do with it. In this particular case, the software takes care of everything for you. So as you can see in this control here, it's displaying the value from here. So as I put my hand closer and further away, you see this little volume meter moving back and forth. This control here is a radar control. You can configure it to interact with the sharp sensor and the servo on its head and also control avoiding objects all by using these different values in the configure screen. In this particular case, this script here will make his ears spin around and they'll do it at random rates. This is initialization routine which will cause his eyes to flash or turn on and he'll actually speak. If you want to hear him talk, I'll push the button and I hold it up to the camera. Hello. So how he's speaking is with the Emric voice synthesis module. It's made by Parallax, and I don't remember the cost, but it allows you to be able to send it commands and it'll actually speak. So right now we have them pretty much just remote controlled. But by adding the sharp IR sensor and the radar control, we can now have it set up so that when he moves forward, he'll actually avoid objects. Then there's a voice recognition control. The voice recognition control allows me to be able to type in the phrase I want him to recognize and the command he'll execute when he hears that phrase. So, for example, I have it set up right now. So if I say, canine turn around, he'll turn around. If I say, canine go forward, he'll move forward. If I say stop, he'll stop. So let's make it, let's turn that on and have him turn around. Canine turn around. Canine go forward. Stop. Canine reverse. Stop. There's also something called a personality generator. And the personality generator allows you to specify a bunch of different commands. And I have in here commands to move his head into different positions, turn his lights on and off, and rotate around in a circle. It'll do one of these commands on a random basis with a trending historical trend and you can specify the lowest and long highest interval of how often to execute. Um, other things I've done is I've created a little control here called Notepad and the Notepad control allows me to be able to type in things that are specific to the project. So in here I have the ports that the servos are plugged into so I can keep track of those. So let's do color camera tracking. He doesn't have a camera on him, but I have one on my laptop, so let's just use that. Right now, it's set up for the color red. So, as you can see, you can see me in the screen. When I hold up this spool of red wire, you can see that it's finding the object. And it's telling me where the object is. If, for example, this camera was mounted on the robot, like as you might have seen with some of my other robots, I can specify the port, the servo port, that the robot head is plugged into, which would have his camera on it. So in this particular case, it's D11. So I plug D11 in, 
had turned on servo tracking. So now the head is going to move as if the camera is attached to it. Additionally to that, we can turn off camera servo tracking and turn on movement tracking and what will happen instead is the robot will actually move its body and it will control the movement panel. In addition to color tracking, you can also add in a camera motion tracking. Motion tracking works a similar way as color tracking except when I move, you can see it's highlighting the area where motion is detected and it's letting you know where that motion is. So you can have your robot move around based upon motion. There's many other controls on here too. You can turn on um, speakers. And there is a speaker plugged into him. And the speaker is plugged into port D19. So we can configure that here, D19. I'm not sure if you can hear that. So as you can see, by using the EZB, you can control all of these different sensors and peripherals, plus adding things like cameras and voice recognition, where it normally would be very difficult and time consuming to do, and you'd spend too much time programming and not enough time actually creating your device. I've created a bunch of robots using this, and here, let me just give you a quick tour. There we go. So this is K9, of course, as you just saw. And this here is the Scarab robot. He's got claws that open and close and it spins around. This is my first robot that I experimented with color tracking. He's got a camera inside of his mouth. He doesn't have a name. This is Teddy Ruxpin. Teddy Ruxpin's been removed and his eyes and mouth operate independently, plus he has moving arms and a moving neck. This is my spider robot, which is currently taken apart because I had to rob some pieces from him. He attacks when he detects motion. This is my small Wally. This Wally also has a Easy B inside of him. I can spin it around here and show you. Here's Dialec. He's got a little sensor in the front where it allows him to be able to op recognize distance. Cookie Monster. Cookie Monster has a little distance sensor in his mouth. You can see it there. And he walks. He's got walking motion in his legs. You can watch videos of all these guys online on my YouTube channel. This is a larger Wally. -E. Same concept as the smaller one. And of course, Master Blaster. Master Blaster hadn't uh, really gotten used too much, unfortunately. I took his board out and he's just been kind of standing there ever since. So it's kind of a shame because he's a pretty neat looking robot, isn't he? Then I have this guy, which I haven't modified yet. This is a Roby Senior. He'll be getting the EZB treatment pretty soon. Oh, and of course we also have Omnibot, who is my best friend. Let me show you to him. Oh, there he is. He's been hanging out inside of my living room, chilling out. He just had a long trip with me coming back from California, so I think he's a little bit tired. Plus, I think his batteries might be dead. I am DJ Schurz. I always want to make sure that people are uh, building robots and having a good time. Sir, I get distracted pretty easy. So, you got a tour of the shop. Easy Builder, Easy B. You can interact with me on my forum on the website on easyrobot.com. I guess that's about it for me now. I'll see you around.